Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to D Backs Dispatch. We got a trio back to uh, today, tonight, whenever you're watching. So we appreciate everyone for tuning in. If this is your first time uh, checking out our content, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Um, we have, I believe, two prior episodes. Make sure to go ahead and check those out. Uh, we're, we are just getting started. It's like the Diamondbacks. We are a comment. You better watch out. Um, but I wanted to go over real quick because I wasn't here for the last episode. The signing, which I still can't believe happened, Rodriguez. I was very, when I saw, saw that he was on my list of guys that I would like them to sign, I did not expect it to happen just because of what this team has done in the past. They just don't spend money. And then there was the, like, everyone thought, he wasn't coming west because he basically vetoed the trade of the Dodgers at the trade deadline last year. But I think that was some miscommunication. He didn't want to go west in the middle of the season. So when they signed him, I was like, yes, yeah, so we have a legit three-headed monster. I love Brandon Fott. I thought he did amazing. He's not a number three. He is a number four. Yeah, not yet. Uh, give him if uh, Strami wants to be here for another two or three years. I could definitely see Braun and Fott getting into maybe a two. I like he's at his ceiling, but I I think he's again he's not bad. He's just not someone that I feel comfortable relying on as my third best starting pitcher. So Rodriguez, I feel. I was very happy. I was like, if only we had that in the World Series. Who knows what happens there in game four? We didn't have very to have true. a bullpen game. You never know. I think with Zach Gallen, Merrill Kelly, Rodriguez, I could see that just those three with wins – Lowest, maybe 40, at the highest, between 45 and 50. If all three of them are on their A game, and I know a lot of people were bringing up Rodriguez's stats against the AL Central from the past few years, and it wasn't very good. I'm like, he played for a team that he only went there because of the contract. He got he got paid big time. He's like, all right, I got that one big paycheck. Now let's go somewhere where I can be on a team. And I just, I feel with the offense that we currently have, I think that was the a big reason why his his numbers weren't very great. He didn't get the runs. It's just that that the Detroit Tigers offense is not very good. So very happy that we sign Rodriguez. I understand the people that are comparing this to the Mad Bum signing. Um, so it's a lefty who some think is over the hill. I don't know. I'm not I don't think gonna it's nearly going to be that much. One, one like Mad Bum obviously had all those like mileage and arm like years on his arm, where Erod doesn't at least. Like that's one, one big thing is like age and just innings. The one thing that I do have though is how they are in the postseason. Rodriguez in the postseason is a monster like i i wonder if they kick the tires on him at the trade deadline like i feel like hazen called and asked about that but i i wonder if the tigers were one of the teams that asked for either Catel Marte or alex thomas and mike haven's like hang up not happening yeah, not if happening you hear Marte's name in a trade talk i'm pretty sure like mike hazen might actually block your number like, I feel like there's a handful of guys. Like, no one's going to ask for Corbin Carroll. No one is. Like, that's just not going to happen. 
But I feel like he has, like, they asked about Alex Thomas, Cattell Marte, and probably Drew Jones. He's like, nope, we're done. Because I think there was a quote that came out during the winter meetings that he, he pretty much said, Drew's pretty much un- untouchable now. Six months? Yeah, he, no, not happening. Yeah, once he gets, like, actual development time under him, like, don't get me wrong, like, I definitely get, like, you know, maybe why he might have fallen from where he was, like, like you know, draft day and all that, you know, number two pick, super hyped, and then, like, hasn't didn't really get a chance to light up the minor leagues like Jackson Holiday, but you give him just, you know, a year in the minors, that do, he, I guarantee he will be up by double A by the end of the year. Minimum. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just that outfield, I'd say in – for me, it was always 2026 for uh, uh, Drew Jones. Can you imagine Drew Jones, Alex Davis, and Corey Carroll in that outfit? Oh, it, it just has me so excited because I watched his dad playing up, and his dad was one of the best center fielders that I had ever seen. Yeah. Like his dad. Like, I, I remember defensive. looking at highlights, and he's just. Yeah. Like, he really, he really, really should. So, um, I think, I think there's still a chance there, but um, that's just me talking about um, Rodriguez because I missed it a bit. But the real reason we're here is Pina Power is back, ladies and gentlemen. The Arizona Diamondbacks re-signed. I guess you could say, re- like, it's weird. Like, it's not we a technically re-signed him. Yeah, like. They didn't do the existing deal, so it's not a, a extension. Like he was a free agent; anyone could have signed him. So, but I'm glad um, they did. Basically, it is three years, forty five million. He has an opt out after year two, and then there's a team option for a fourth season. I and actually I saw compl- something. It's technically 42 with like incentives but basically okay. gets to 45 still so, I was like I really had given up on like hoping that he come like I was like they didn't do do it right away they didn't re-sign him and I thought someone was gonna overpay for him I thought someone's gonna give him like three for 48 or 50 I really thought someone was going to because every year you have these guys that have a half a good season in a contract year and someone overpays for them. I'm glad nobody did um, because I think his impact on this team is more than on the field. You could like, you saw it after the signing, you saw how happy Corbin Carroll was. We all saw the post from Gabby when he became an official free agent. And we're like, yeah, that definitely felt like they they all knew he's not coming back yeah. like he's just a glue but, like key part of this team man so glad they kept him around i am too like i still can't believe that he did not become a finalist for uh gold glove what he, it wasn't pretty who, whenever he made these plays but he did not commit an error who, he did not who, commit which an is error. I, I heard today on the uh the talk in baseball, or we can say the the Jimmy whining about the Diamondbacks ruining baseball. Um, the Trevor Plouffe mentioned that I think Guriel finished second in all of Major League Baseball. I think it was either in outfielders, or maybe it was specifically in left fielders. I believe it was specifically left fielders. Um, so I could you know uh, stand corrected, but I believe he was second in all of uh, MLB, just behind Stephen Kwan when it came to. Uh, with the 14 outs above average, or the 14 defensive run saved, whatever the metric is, um, forgetting off the top of my head, but that's that's insane. Like, not even just the NL. Like, he wasn't second in the NL. He was just second in baseball. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe Stephen Kwan won the gold uh, glove in. I Maybe in left field, because uh, there's no way he was second, because That's what I, I'm hard. pretty sure Dalton Varsho and somebody else had, like, and Tatis had, like, 20-something. So I think it was just left field. But either way, it shows, like, like you said, he wasn't pretty. Like there was a lot of plays where I can even say like some of the nice plays he made definitely made a nice play, but it was like a, a faster guy like Corbin Carroll, maybe Alec Thomas makes those look way more routine. So than I think a guy like Gurriel. he was seventh in all of major league baseball with 14 defensive run saves. So it's Varsho, Tatis, Doyle, Kiermaier, 
Kwan and Johan Rojas. Those are phenomenal defensive players. Nothing against... So Johan Rojas was up there and he was up here for half a year. That's insane. Yeah, that's how good of a... He had 392 innings. Johan Rojas did for the Phillies. Um, everyone else crazy. is way above that. Lotus was at 778, but that's because he played DH a lot. Before yeah. we got Tommy Pham. But like, as Some soon of as we got... benefits... I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. And if we go just based on National League, he's fourth. Because it goes Tatis, Doyle, uh, Rojas, and Gurriel. And let me see. And that's how just many all outfield. Got... Yeah, and most of these guys are gold glovers. Like, this... is it Jeff McKay is the outfield coach, or is that uh, Paris Chica? Dave McKay. Dave McKay is, Dave McKay is the God. outfield coach. Dude, he is the god. Like, what he's done with these outfielders. Like, Alex Thomas is not the fastest player out there. He's fast. Don't he's he's he is. I'm not saying he's slow, fast, but if he had <clears throat> Corbin speed, he'd make even more insane. Like he's definitely like. I think if you go again, this is just me geeking out. But if you go and look at like MLB the Show speed. Corbin's like a 99. Thomas is like a 72. They they disrespected Thomas heavily because literally just they his... Do. Here, I have his baseball savant. I'm pulling up his uh, stat cast numbers. So in 2023, when it came to uh, sprint speed, it definitely dipped a little bit. He was in the 87th percentile. So I definitely like... I think like I was uh, overestimating his speed and I think you're probably accurate with... He's definitely fast. Not like the... Bobby Wood Jr., the Rojas, the Corbin Carrolls, the Trey Turners of the league, where he's even the Jake McCarthy, where they're in the 95 plus percentile speed. But he can, you know, he, he just reads it. that top 87% speed. He doesn't look like an 87% speed out there in the outfield. He looks like, you know, Jacoby Ellsbury, some of those dudes that like are hauling like Usain Bolt into the gaps to make those plays. He just, <laughs> he reads the ball so well. Like it is insane how well. He reads the ball. Like, I think that's why he gets – he's always in the right spot because he reads it. He takes the right route. There are other players like Tatis who I don't think read the ball as well, but they're so athletically gifted that that skill makes up for it if they read the ball raw. Like, say they go in when they should go out. Um, so, yeah, it's just, it's just crazy. So, Gabe, I just want to hear your thoughts on – uh, what do you think of the uh, Lotus signing? I think this is the perfect signing. Like, it's not the best signing. Obviously, there's probably better outfielders or whatever out there in the league. But this is the perfect signing for this team. I guess this is, I don't even know, a re-acquire. They're reacquiring him instead of, you well, know, like I'm like, what is this? Because it's, it's not redoing an existing contract. It's like a free agent he deal, was... but you get like a team friendly extension type. Yeah, yeah, it's like a reacquisition. And like, I really do think it was team friendly because if you look at all the other guys, like JD Martinez probably get 15 million. And he's not, you know, out there playing defense. He's not doing anything else. He's just hitting. And yet we got him for, you know, three for 42. It's an option. Like, he's literally just going to be here until we can call up True Jones or anyone else. And just like, Erod, D backs, I think, got a steal for him. Once we see the Glasnow contract, we'll, we'll talk about later. Like, they played, what, $127 million or whatever for him for four years. You got Erod for almost half of that. Yeah. So, I'm happy we got Gurriel. I think he is a great clubhouse guy, especially for the younger guys. He's not going to be, you know, the best hitter on the team, but. He extends the lineup he, a lot. He may just... for uh, one month. He may just go off like we saw in the month of May, where he literally was yeah. probably the best hitter in all of Major League Baseball. You could not get yeah. him out in the month of May. He legit was like the, like you said, the best Max hitter, and if if not the best hitter and in sometimes baseball, that's he was all definitely you need. Like you just need a, one really good month. Ooh, as Josh brings up a great point, we get more sandcastles, baby. Yes, we do. I just saw that. That made me laugh. He is so true on that. So, 
Josh brought this up. How do you think this? And, oh, and so do we want to wrap up here our talks on uh, Gary Allen, kind of transition to what our next topic here with the uh, D-backs? Well, I was going to see if, uh, one, like obviously like I know they're uh, still, like they're not done making moves like we already talked about, or like Hazen and them and Kendrick has said, like there's still more moves to be made. They're still in talks with JD and Turner and all that. <clears throat> and we'll cover that. But do you think like, this makes them like, do you think they're going to stay that same aggressive level? Or do you think like the Glasnow trade and the Otani news kind of made them like, like, again, like we could probably all admit, I didn't think like the payroll being in the one forties, maybe the one fifties. Like I figured that would have been the max. Like I could, I could see them like, like last year's off season, the mindset that we had, you know, no, we had, if we were even okay, if we, you know, missed the playoffs or barely made the playoffs and then lost in the first round and we made these kind of moves, I'd be like, you know what? I'm content with what we got. Like, you know, it's good. Like, you know, if we're not going to break the bank, at least, you know, we did what we did. But the fact that they're this aggressive, like, it makes me think, like, are they going to dish out? Like, do you think they're going to settle for, like, the older guys like JT? Do you think they're going to um, be more aggressive? Like, maybe, like Brandon and I were talking about before, like, do you think they're going to get an extra additional bullpen piece, like not a hater, not like a Paul Seawall kind of trade, but like just a reliable extra arm because you always got to have depth. Do you think it's going to make them maybe go out and sign another starter? Like, I want to hear yeah, what you guys I, I would, uh, had to think on that. I, I honestly want, I want Granky back. He had a five and a half ERA, which like doesn't sound good. But if you look at the, um, I should have laughed. Stats behind it. Oh, did you freeze? Oh, I think our man Gabe froze. He absolutely froze. I was going to wait for him because I want to jump in. I don't hate the idea. I don't want the signing now. I want it in February. Yeah. That's fair. So, Gabe, you broke up a little bit. You want to talk a little bit more about why you wanted that uh, uh, Zach Greinke signing? Oh, yeah, my bad. It was, uh, so for me, like I said, it's a five and a half ERA, not great, but his FIP was like 4.7 or something like that, which is kind of what you need. You kind of need like a 4.7 FIP guy because you put him on a good defense on a deep ballpark like Chase. Suddenly he can end up, you know, four and a half, 4.2. And that, I honestly think that's perfect for a five guy. Move Henry to the bullpen for depth. Like the Royals paid him what? And fifteen million last year, you could probably get it for less than that. You could probably get it for like eight million. And you get a reliable starter who's gonna go out there every five days and you know, it's gonna not kinda light up anything, but gonna eat up a lot of innings. That's a great point. I just don't know if he's a starter anymore. I feel like he might be a reliever now. Now yeah, overall, kind of I would I would not hate him as like a long relief guy in in those instances where maybe Fod has a bad outing or Tommy Henry. Because I, I, what I see as the starting five on opening day, Gallon, Kelly, Rodriguez, Fod, and Tommy Henry. That's what my personal top five would probably be. Because I think Tommy Henry showed that he is a starter. He, he's not a flashy, get you six strikeouts through seven. No. But he keeps your team in the game. He gives you a chance. I will say I'd probably take Tommy Henry over Ryan Nelson. Plus, Maybe. I feel like they've been really righty heavy in the rotation for years. Like, Erod's, yes. like, before, obviously, last year when we called up, like, Tommy Henry and, like, what, Mad Bum was our big lefty for years. Like, before, like and that was after Robbie Ray left. Like, We've always only had like one lefty, which again, like leagues, it seems like teams in the league hit lefties well, but it's still like, I don't know. I kind of like having more lefties and that's a great point. Like I feel like just because we didn't see a lot of Tommy Henry at the the end of the season uh, because of the injury. And then obviously, you know, didn't really see him in the playoffs. Well, didn't see him in the playoffs at all. Uh, doesn't really like come to the front of the mind, but I really think like, that's a great point. Like if they don't go get another starter, like I'd, I'd be okay with at least like coming into the season with like, Henry being like our fifth guy, another lefty in the thing. Like, and like you said, like whether like if they do go get Granky, like you have him, 
Nelson and Granky, like like hypothetically, like you could swap three of those dudes around for long relief whenever you need it. Like if you if you wanted to do a bullpen kind of game, but it's not a bullpen game where you're changing people every inning. Like there's definitely some options they could still run with with what they have now. Yeah, um, definitely. Um, yeah, um, I, I would like them to maybe kick the tires on a potential fifth starter just to have the options there in spring training. I don't like putting Tommy Henry out there is a decent idea, but I would feel probably more comfortable with someone just a little bit better. Um, and I'm curious if they're going to, are they going to go Gallon Kelly one and two in the rotation? Or do you think they might enter go right, left, right? Do they go Gallon Rodriguez Kelly? I think it depends. So the first game in the or first series of the season is home opener against Colorado for I believe four. Okay, so that's four. and then we have New York right after. The Yankees. So the Yankees. So the Yankees in the second home series of the season, uh, or second series of the season, first home stand of the season. Uh, it's going to be I believe a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I wouldn't be surprised if maybe they try to plan around like. Like obviously, like it's it's a whole one sixty two game season, so this could just be a stupid, you know, point. But maybe they go, okay, we're facing Colorado. Let's have it plan to where, like maybe they have it be you get at least two of those three facing the Yankees in that series. Like you have it be where oh maybe you have like the Erod and Kelly or the the Gallon and Erod or the Gallon and the Kelly, yeah. whatever you need it to be to match up better. You know, facing now that you know the the Yankees new left handed slugger Juan Soto. If you wanted to try to have a lefty face him, throw Erod out there. But honestly, I think it'll just be the normal, like Gallon Kelly one two, and then Erod, just because like I feel like they've they've earned and like solidified their spots. Is like why why would they you know get down like downgraded just for like a matchup? Yep. Like if they're the dudes, they're the dudes. They're not gonna make this choice until a week before the season anyway. Yeah, until what yeah. March? Yeah, yeah, because. There's there's so much that can change between now and then. Hopefully, um, I I yeah I didn't even look what other starting pitchers are still left. Um, I I know the uh, Royals went and got two guys that I was hoping that we go try and get with uh, Lugo and Walker. I would have liked Walker. Uh, or Walker, yeah, yeah. Like so, I I still think that once they've address their other needs like the full-time dh probably a backup catcher maybe another depth guy for the infield um i think they might look into maybe another starter like like gabe said i think zach Greinke. i don't hate the idea um i just i don't know if he wants to go back into a bigger bigger not a big but a bigger media media market i think that's why he likes kc Nobody bothers him there. Just gets left um, alone, yeah. Yeah, like he can just do his thing. So, um, just because we did talk about Guriel, um, I'm glad that we didn't discuss this in our little group chat because I really want to see everyone's reaction. What color is his hair going to be on opening day? And my pick is the color of Gabby's green hat i mean shirt and shoes that he wore in that instagram Aaron. photo that is my pick for his hair on opening day i know it's not really a diamondbacks color but it felt like at that time he knew that the chances were better i think he knew i think he knew that they were talking and they were all and they were pretty close like both sides were pretty close Gabby hasn't like hasn't been like the the guy to wear the super bright colors like Perdomo and Cattell, and then like didn't really like wouldn't dye his hair like Guriel. So it was a, it was a little bit of a shock to be like, okay, that's like, definitely something, something that like Guriel would like, do. Something is like yeah. definitely up there, like because yeah, he wouldn't do that. Yeah, I, so, I think maybe teal, like put like the, the whole teal of our background here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, why not, right? It's the Diamondbacks colors now. He has the purple. You know, he matched perfectly with the throwback jersey. So why not just match with the new jerseys and make it teal? Yeah, I was honestly going to say the same thing. Like, I feel like it would just fit. Like, the purple, 
like because the D-backs didn't like you know the purple is obviously what the fans like. I think he just chose purple, but I think it'll be a uh, kind of like oh another way to like you know more embrace like hey you know this, this team this city like you know main color like the the thing they're switching to the teal i feel like it'll just fit more especially like those uniforms are you kidding me that like bright teal hair with those home black unis the the teal piping oh my goodness that is that with josh's beautiful like whatever uh resolution camera lens i kind of see it right now that's going to be some mm, some spicy stuff right there some spicy content kiss yeah so um but there's still one big piece that they need to address this off season, and that is a full time DH. And I think we can all in agreement go with it's probably going to be either one of the three of JD Martinez, Justin Turner, or Solar. My personal pick, I I don't think it's going to happen now because they re-signed Guriel. I wanted Jorge Soler. Yeah. I think he is the perfect fit for this team. Would fit in so well, be the full-time DH, play left field every now and then to give Guriel an off day. I just don't personally see it happening now. Unless Kendrick's like, I've already spent this much. Let's just keep going. Like, let's just keep raising that. Um, to be honest, I'm very probably not like most of my back fans. I don't want JD back. I'm sorry. What he said along with David Peralta about Chase Field during the NLDS really rubbed me the wrong way. So he didn't say it like David Peralta said about coming to Chase Field during the NLDS was going to be a home game. He pretty much agreed with what David Peralta said. I thought that was AJ Pollock. No. Well, no, he AJ, wasn't there anymore. Did, I, I know yeah, if, if, just, if it was, if it was JD, helped. then it was both as well. I know AJ basically trashed the fans oh. when he left. I don't remember JD doing that. I'm probably mistaken. So, and I think I feel like Turner hits two boxes as well, DH, and can back up at third and first base, which I feel is what we need. Even though. Trading for Suarez, dude plays every day anyway. So and I think he can play first too. So like, yeah, he doesn't play it as much. Though. Like he he played a majority at third base this past year. So definitely probably. So if I had to rank, I go Soler, Turner, JD. I'd be fine with any one of the three. Don't get me wrong. Like any one of the three, this. This offense could be deadly with any one of those three. Yeah, I have a guy for you guys. I know we're talking about JD, Justin Turner, and Soler. Let me read off some stats for you guys real quick. Ooh, yes, give us no names, just stats. I love these. 19 home runs, 254 batting average, 43 RBI. So this is a limited amount of time. This is I can't remember how many times. Right around 100. So on base, 369. Slugging Ooh. 490 OPS 859 and a 136 OPS. I actually like or that. Or eight that million dollars. Ooh, who is yeah, this? That's actually. Yeah, who is this? That's Brandon Belt, who is a free agent. Also can play hmm. first base. First wow. base. Oh, that's what there's I a name out of left field Just I never Walker. thought of. He he needs time off his his legs. He. You know, last year we struggled having, but we're putting Pavin Smith out there. Like, poor guy. We have, you know, Brandon Bell can play first, a really good first base still, but he can be our full time DH. You, you know, he's 35, I think. So he doesn't need to be out in the field, anyways. But he was able to hit, you know, almost 20 home runs in about 100 games or so. And, you know, he's shown he still has a lot of power. He gets on base. Imagine him hitting behind Guriel or Moreno or whatever. Like that would really, really lengthen this lineup. Also, the only downside I see to it is just some they've said bombs. they're only looking for. Yeah. He doesn't. He does have a really nice lefty swing. I've seen some in person over the years of Chase. That's nice. Um, honestly, that's a great pull. I never even like thought about that. And like, I I wouldn't be upset. Like, especially like maybe if they start to tighten up their their spending a little bit, and maybe so, like you know Solaire is out of the market. Maybe. JD is a little bit higher on what they do. Like I could see them trying to kick the tires on like Brandon Belt, but 
maybe the, the only downside to it is just it doesn't fit that like because that's like the one main thing we like at least i've like seen a lot is like right-handed power bats like they've always prefaced the power bat with like saying like making sure they're like right-handed power bat um so again like maybe that's just like them being like oh this is what they prefer and then like now that they got suarez now that they got you know Gurriel, like they do have like two solidified right-handed spots like and you know the like you said with the brandon belt being a good backup option like or backup at first base option for when seawalk needs some days off of his feet um Honestly, it could it could fit. Like he knows, I don't have his stats at Chase Field off the top of my head, so I don't know if he hits here I'm trying as well as a guy like right. Justin Turner did. Because I know so, Justin Turner uh, absolutely. I raked found there. it. So in oh, 265 no. at bats, 12 so like homers, half a season. Half a season. yeah, 12 homers, 44 RBI, slash of 257, 349, 464. So an OPS of 813. I will take that's that. Not bad. That's not bad. That's not bad for eight for eight million, $8 million dollars. I will take that. the price of JP. That's actually yeah. a great pull there, Gabe. Yeah. Yeah, I want to give credit yeah. to my brother who pulled that one out. <laughs> yeah, Damn. like I don't hate that idea. Yeah, like um, legitimately, yeah. like I would be, I would be okay with it. Um, but uh, me he... personally, I'm definitely on the like I, I think I'll change up Brandon's uh, ranking a little bit. I would definitely go Solaire. JD and then Turner, like, and agree. I think all three I'd be very happy with. Um, Solaire, I like just because, like, you know, as the list goes down, the age gap is, I think, like a four year difference each one. Solaire's only 31. So, yeah, you're going to have to pay him, like, probably a longer contract than both of them would be. Probably going to be what a two, three year minimum. Uh, oh, yeah. He has, I've, I feel like, way more power. If I'm not mistaken, uh, I'm going to try to find his stats really quick. I think he's relatively healthy. Like, let me see how many at bats he puts up in every year. Uh, so the last, okay, maybe maybe not fully. So in Kansas City, Atlanta, and then Miami in 2022, he put up no more than 310 at bats in each season. But the previous two, other than 2020, put up 500 plus 504 last year with Miami. Like, relatively healthy guy, still a young age, hits for insane power. Like he can hit some insane shots into CBCB that I would love to see in person. Um, but obviously like he might be a little more expensive and like, there's probably teams like the Mariners that might be a little more aggressive for guys like him. Um, JD again, like I'd be fine with him. He's what 35, I believe would be maybe a one, two year deal a little bit, maybe less than solar or around uh, would be familiar here. I just don't know necessarily if he provides that like, that like threat like Solaire is like he's if didn't he also win the World Series MVP for the Braves right he yeah did. yeah like he's a World Series MVP like he he provides like actual like you see him in your lineup like you know what he's there to do like yeah JD is a great hitter but Solaire's there to hit bombs like if you leave him a mistake pitch like he will punish you and especially if we know like with this last year with the D backs you know create chaos brand of base uh brand of baseball like you know you get the pitcher to worry about you know one base runner one too many pitches leaves a hanging pitch to Solaire that's you know crooked number on the board easy not saying that JD and um Turner can't do that either but I don't know I feel like it just it adds that little bit more of a threat to the lineup that can help other guys around him you know down the order or even before him in the lineup get better pitches to see and like with JD again or with uh, Turner Turner Great numbers here. Would also be happy with him. But he's the oldest of the bunch, I believe, at 39. He would only be like a one-year deal, basically like a stopgap. Uh, and then we'd, we'd, we'd be in the same position next year. We'd look for another, you know, DH, another third baseman. So I'd rather just have one of JD or Solaire for at least two years and kind of have that position solidified. And I'd prefer Solaire just because of the power, the threat, the age. Just, I don't know. I, I feel like he's just a better fit, too. Yeah. Yeah. And just... Just thinking about it, like we Turner destroys at Chase Field too. Like I don't have those numbers in front of me, but I know he's like he a has hit, something hitter. He's hit some bombs there at left field. Like he has absolutely wrecked at Chase Field. We know JD does because he does it everywhere. Um, and for that half season, we had him here. So any one of those three, I'd be, I'd be like, like Gabe mentioned, I'd be fine with Brandon Belt as well. So we'll have to see here. Um, 
Something I wanted to also bring up that Jeff Passan up uh, tweeted out uh, a couple days ago. Um, the Diamondbacks are the third team to number three so far this postseason. Sorry, this offseason in terms of free agent spending um, at $122 million they've given out. That's absolutely crazy to me. They're second behind the Phillies at once. Yeah. They're second behind the Phillies in at one seventy two and Dodgers at seven seventeen, which is just crazy because that's literally just Shohei's contract. Yeah, was that so is yeah. absolutely crazy. And their payroll last year was sixty two million. It is projected to be at one twenty, as of right now. That's almost double. Just... I never thought we'd see that. I'm glad that Kendrick has decided to. Stop spending so much money on his baseball cards. And yeah, spend I, I want his team. I definitely want to say, like, I've, I will, I will be the first to admit, um, I've been very critical of Ken Kendrick in the past few years. You know, I know a lot of fans have. Uh, I want to at least be one of the first to admit, like, it is, it is genuinely like great to see, like, how much, like, it seems like this offseason um, and whatnot. It's really seemed to like show how much he actually cares like it, it is like it, it is nice to see like he does care like it's it's not like the the a's debacle like you know where the guy is just just about money like yes like he's still like ken kendrick we've seen for years will still would still run it like a business would still you know be financially handcuffed from the previous ownership and all that yada 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 like the dude the dude genuinely cares about winning and it's nice to see him actually like like fully commit like we've how many jokes and doubts that we have like oh cool like hopefully they at least spend some kind of money like on somebody like in past few years uh, signing like erod or like you know trade like eugenio uh signing like gurio would have been like their only big move and then they would go for like you know cheap like marginal three guys that dollars. you know you can yeah yeah the three to five million dollar guys that like oh if they suck cool you can cut them you don't have to worry about it like i i want to give uh kendrick his flowers he's really um shown that he's not just an owner in it for money like he actually does care about like a team it seems like he cares about the city like he actually wants to put a winning product here uh and Probably maybe it's just for show maybe it's just one thing now money he he got yeah from us he's, like, the wait, he's like wait he's like wait the World this Series? is what we happens? just get like 30 million dollars for free huh okay let's yeah. do that every year i, I wonder like, okay so if i put a better that. product out there this will happen consistently yeah I want to piggyback on that, uh, Brett, because for so long, he's been owning the Diamondbacks since 2007. What do you know about Ken Kendrick other than the baseball cards? Like, nothing. He never does media. The only thing you ever know about him is some weird, shady political stuff that he might might not do or whatever. But for the most part, he never talks to the media. And I remember this year at spring training, it was like the first time he had an actual like press conference with the media, which we never saw before. At the winter meetings, he's out here, you know, talking with his chest out, talking about Otani ain't nothing, he ain't him, he's just one guy or whatever the crap he was saying. Definitely won't come but, back to bite us. You know, but he's putting his money where his mouth is for the first time. Like the running joke in the city has been, you know, Corbin Carroll. Okay, he's a rookie, he's great. They're gonna trade him at some point, right? They're gonna let him go. But no, what did they do? They went out and they extended him, he gave him a lot of money. They extended Cattell, like. They have a really good, solid core here, and they're actually spending the money. I mean, obviously, it's obviously because Kendrick got the money as well from all the World Series and playoff appearances. But just the fact that he's finally, you know, putting himself out there, showing people like, hey, I care about this team. And probably is because of Ishbia, you know, getting a lot of good press. But still, it's like he's showing finally what other team owner do you know who's doing this? Other than the Dodgers, yeah. Well, <laughs> and, and I guess it. Hal, the top like the I, the big like Yankees, Dodgers, Phillies, yeah, the guys that th- can throw around their money. I feel like Hazen and Derek Hall talked to him and said like, "This is what happens with what we little we have compared to the team that we played. Give us a little bit more, and we can show you we can do this consistently." So I feel like this is like a trial. Like if this works. Say we make the playoffs again and say we only make the divisional or the league championship series. I think that will still show, okay, this is worth it. You got to just keep putting into it. 
You got to keep doing it. You got to put a competitive product on the field. You do that every year. People will, people will come to the ballpark. People do not want to watch, go and spend money to watch a team lose. Yeah, so the, I guess the one thing that would be the worst case scenario would be kind of what happened, I believe, in uh, was it twenty uh, sixteen or seven? Whenever they basically got the the Hazen Lovello like era, where so, I believe that was the the twenty seventeen. Yeah, twenty seventeen when they had one of their biggest payrolls. Like, you know, he invested in the team. Was like, cool. You know, if if this is what we can do, we can do. We'll invest. And then, like, obviously, fell short of the expectations didn't happen and then they basically like immediately were like cool well we're going into our uh competitive rebalance not rebuild window but it's not a rebuild but it is a rebuild but it's not kind of thing like well the, yeah. the thing is i don't think that would happen the, but that's when they went to the playoffs that year right and it's had like one of the higher payrolls but here's the thing they didn't invest in that team we could have invested in that team by re-signing jd martinez what do they do they got yep. up, you know steven Souza jr who played like half a game for us Instead, and meanwhile, JD hit like 330, was an MVP candidate for Boston, and they won the World Series. I still think if they kept JD with the team that they had, I think they could have won the World Series that year. Or at least gone back to the playoffs and made a deep three, four of of D backs, Prime, Goldie, and JD. Cattell, Marte, two MVP candidate. Like yeah, you're talking about a really, really great team that could have formed there, and you know they stumbled well, in Robbie September because yeah, now I think Robbie had a what it 2. didn't 8 help that we got in the year. destroyed in the divisional against the Dodgers that year. It it also like not to you know fully go off topic. I I still have actual nightmares. It, it really sucks. Like I like the wild card format that it is now, um, because I feel Some like it don't. leads to teams having a better competitive because. That one game winner go home wild card. There's a reason why Robbie Ray didn't start the NLDS it's because Zach Granke got shelled. And again, like you know, that's just the Rockies. Both teams had a good offense. Yet Granke got shelled. Had to bring in Robbie Ray. Burnt through so much of the bullpen tour. Then like you're starting Taiwan again. Love Taiwan Walker. It's a person like you know. Yeah. But I'm sorry if you're starting Taiwan Walker in Game One against the Dodgers in LA. Like you got to be perfect. And like the du- the dude was like hardly ever perfect. And like you had to be against like the Dodgers. So like. It is, I like better the, the the new format just because we don't have to like worry about like, you know, having another one of those situations. Yeah, I I think this is gonna be different because you got a generational talent in Corbin Carroll. <laughs> we didn't have that last time. We had and on a hundred and twelve year extension for the next seven plus years. God, that after what that's he so did, hot. That's, that's so hot. It's a freaking steal. We may as well transition. Corbin Carroll got another accolade, y'all. He is on the all MLB first team with his with his teammate, Zach Allen. The milkman. Like it's just something. Oh, sorry. Gallon didn't have a very good end of the season. That's what's crazy. Like, had he finished the year the way that he started, I still think he would have won the Cy Young. Oh, he would have. He had an insane, like, two and a half month stretch. Like, literally, there's, and I know, like, obviously, hindsight, there's there's a very good reason why he started the All-Star game and even going into it, you know, stumbled a little bit. And um, who but, did like, he strike out good... in the All-Star game? The Ohtani. the $2 million man, Shohei Otani. The $2 million man. <laughs> Not wrong. Uh, but with the, the All-MLB team, um, this is actually on the MLB Trade Rumors site I saw. Uh, they got it from uh, Ronald Blum of the Associated Press. Uh, they basically had the, you know, like the players that are pre-arbitration eligible. Uh, I believe it was in the last CBA. They put it into where there's a pool, like a bonus pool money, like bonus money for like, you know, basically the way it breaks down is rookie of the year gets 750000 for first place. Uh, five hundred thousand for second. MVP and Cy Young get two point five mil for first, one point seven five for second, one point five for third, one million for fourth, and then all MLB. Uh, first team gets one million. Uh, all MLB, MLB second team gets five hundred thousand. Corbin Carroll was number two in the pre-arbitration pool, uh, coming in at earning one million eight hundred twelve thousand. Uh, on top of obviously you know like his salary. 
just behind Julio Rodriguez, uh, 1.8 million, and then beat out like Adley Rushman, 1.7, Spencer Strider, 1.6, and then Gallon himself even got 2.5 million just for coming in third in the Cy Young and then also being all MLB team, which it was it was kind of cool. I obviously like I didn't remember this and being in the CBA, so just seeing like you know it's it's really cool like those uh, things that they added that the players were like actually looking for like coming into effect and like this like that's for some of these guys like that's some actual like that's still some life changing money. Yeah, especially for just... Rushman, who was not going to see anything until what year four maybe. Oh yeah, because like he's he didn't not going to get. Uh, any... He's not even on an extension yet. He's still just on his no, rookie deal. No, he's like he's still going to be what this was his full rookie year, right? Or was that last year? This is his f- no. Last year he was like three quarters of the year he was up. Yeah. No, he was he was up on like opening day. Either way, yeah. Last year was his full opening year. Yeah, but I mean, for him, this, he made double his salary. You know, for the next couple yeah. of years, so it's good for them. So his service. I'm uh, hold up. See if I can find his service. Because he came in in like May or June of 2022. Two, yeah, okay. I knew it wasn't the. I guess I I was I correct the first time. I knew it was an opening day, but I knew so, he, it was a majority of the year he was up on the the MLB roster. I guess they're saying it's he's at two years of service time. I guess. Well, last year they counted as a full year, and then this year. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Um. But, what is the pre-arbitration again? What like the first like three or four years? I think I it's what... four, five, and six. I think. So the first three years, four, are five, just making sure. Yeah, he played one hundred and thirteen games. He played one. Dylan Cease got two point four million in twenty twenty two. That's crazy. No, <laughs> good for them, man. Yeah, um, and I know there were a lot of fans of other teams that thought that. Corbin wasn't first team. Like they thought it was like Aaron Judge or Julio Rodriguez. They played what a combined 100 games, maybe. Or Julio yeah, Rodriguez played more. Julio but... was he he played like 120, I think, because he had an yeah. injury spurt here and there. Yeah. So congrats there to Corbin Carroll on his list of accolades. He gets that he's only going to be getting going forward. Yeah, he's like, going to be a long ass ceremony. Get another shelf, dude. I feel Corbin is going to be one of those guys that's probably going to be getting All Star every year. Um, and, and he would be getting MVP votes every year if it wasn't for. Oh uh, yeah. So we that, are going to Otani. Uh, we're going <laughs> to transition to that. Yeah. Uh, Shohei Otani uh, signs with the Los Angeles Dodgers for a twenty-year, seven hundred million dollar deal. I don't care that it says it's ten years. It is a twenty-year deal. It is a twenty-year yeah. deal. Uh, congrats, because the man deserves it. I can't believe they—he's getting seven hundred. I thought after Crazy. his arm, he was getting like five seventy-five. Yeah, I was thinking like five, maybe like six, six twenty-five at max. So I, I, I just didn't. And then I saw that, and then what? How the deal works? I'm like that. I understand. Yeah, say so break it down for the people that might have been living under a rock for the last two weeks and haven't heard any of the news. So it technically is a 10-year, $700 million deal. But the first 10 years, he's only getting $2 million a year. And then after that, he's deferring the rest of the money. So years 1 through 10, $2 million a year. Years 11 through 20, $68 million a year. Um, I understand it's still in the CBA. It definitely feels like a loophole because they have no stipulation as to like deferred money, but it definitely feels like then don't say it's a 10 year deal. It's a 20 year deal. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the the weird thing about it is that I, what I believe they're putting it like in some sort of trust or something like that. So that 68 million a year, I don't think it's going to count against the Dodgers in 10 years. I don't think that's going to be part of their technical payroll either. So they're going to be, you know, not hitting the the competitive balance threshold either, the tax, because it's technically like, oh, it's in the bank sort of thing. It's borrowed money. That's what that's basically what they referred it to is borrowed money. They borrowed money from Otani. That's what they're basically saying. So they don't have to re- put it in the actual 
uh, salaries, which is, I don't know, it's weird. I mean, good on them for you figuring that out. You can call me but... <laughs> a bitter Max fan, a bitter fan because he's going to the Dodgers. There's only like four teams MLB would have allowed this to happen. Yeah. Dodgers, Yankees, Mets, and probably Cubs. Anyone else, pretty sure MLB would have been no because they're – what? How do we know that your team's going to be successful after this 10 years that can afford to pay yeah. them that money? Yeah. And Josh brings up a good point. Is like something off about him saying that offer was on for other teams is like, and these are Josh's words, like you're telling me that uh, the Giants wouldn't have done that deal. Like, that's a great point. Like, like did, was that like a, when he said like, oh, this is an option for all teams. Was that a, he presented that option to every team or it was a, oh, this is going to be available in case somebody has like, um, like a you know like a oh if they bring it up I'll agree and be like oh yeah we can definitely work on that yeah like there's a lot of information on this that I'm like what is actually true and what is being said by people on his team um it just it it sucks because I I was a huge fan of Shohei but I'm yeah I can't. me too um he's I'm like he I, I hope Joey Otani never wins a World Series at this point until after he's, he's done not going something. to. He is not going to because of who their manager is. And I will die on this hill. Dave Roberts is the reason the Dodgers don't have at least three World Series. That man does not know how to manage in the postseason. Yeah, it's the fact crazy. That they've I mean, only been a... but three times. So Astros, Red Sox, and then the twenty twenty season. Like, does it count? Anyone can manage that roster to a hundred wins. Like the regular yeah. season, it's really not that difficult. Like, jokingly, I could probably do it. Like, you give me that yeah, roster. I mean, the thing is, the reason you know why they don't fire Roberts, even though you know with all these failures, so it it was assigned to a what five year extension or whatever recently, like in the last couple of years. Because he's a yes man, they do what he wants. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Nowadays, from what you hear from you know people in the front offices, is that most of the moves are conducted by the front offices. They're the ones who decide who to put on the field, when to take them out, what pitch count is. Like, it's basically like the NFL, where the people are watching from the top and telling you know what plays to run. That's basically what baseball has become, and that's why someone like Lavello, why he makes weird moves, because he's in Salo's head. Like, he gives him the team, and at that point. Lavello decides who to put out there. He says, like, you know, I give him the, uh, you know, he gives him his suggestions, and then it's up to Lavello. And I don't think Roberts does that. I think he's literally just, you know, yes, okay, I'll do this. Okay, I'll do that. So it's, I, I would assume it's the front office who makes these, you know, bonehead you think, moves you, a lot of the time. You and think it's Roberts similar pays to what, for it later on. Do you think it's similar to what Joe Madden went through with the Angels, where they basically would be like, hey, here's a game plan. Here's what we want you to do. Yeah. Here's what we want to put in this situation. Uh, if you don't listen to us, we will have a meeting, and we will dis- or voice our displeasure. Like, I mean, yeah. I, I could I could see that, but I don't know. Like, I feel like it, it, maybe not to that extent, but I definitely could see it being like a, them being like, hey, Dave, we would really prefer if you did this. And then, like, you know, he maybe for a few of those years, he, like, they let him run the show, and then they were like, hey – uh, we you have a you know choice here, choice here, choice here, choice here. We would have done it differently this way. We're gonna you know give our input, try to run at this, and like I wouldn't be surprised because some of those in the playoffs, like you know pulling out their some of their pitchers when they're in there for too long, or leaving them in there when they're for too long, and then you pull them out when they're like cruising after four. It's like was that was that a Dave Roberts? Like that doesn't seem like the kind of guy that played baseball in the '90s and early 2000s kind of like yeah. mindset. Like I, that doesn't seem like you know what he would do, unless he just overmanages yeah. and we're overthinking it. But I I think I mean, he, that's what that's he what, could what be the Dodger fans always complain about that he overmanages. But at the same time, I'm like Dave Roberts, he's the same guy who was on that Red Sox team that had Kurt Schilling out there pitching with like a torn ankle. Like who would do that nowadays? No one. <laughs> You know, the front office would right away take him out of the game and stuff. So that's why I'm assuming that's what it is. That's why they haven't fired him. He's been, you know, one of the longer tenured Dodger managers. So, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I just, just, just interesting how Shohei, though, 
in this con- he has a lot of opt outs. Yeah. Like Yeah, he will opt out after is it after certain years or is it just no, no, no. If, like a clause? Like it's just if a certain a clauses. personnel changes, right? Yeah, it is personnel changes. So it's not the a GM player opt out. Yeah, like I believe it's the president of basketball of baseball operations uh Friedman, I believe if Friedman, he yeah. goes and I think if there's a change in ownership he also gets the chance to opt out at the end of that season. Which we know that the all this on his, on his and now, which is funny because if anything, maybe this is a silver lining. If that's in there, maybe, maybe they never fire Dave Roberts. Maybe they just keep him there forever. Maybe they just the run with the, you know, the, the Friedman Roberts and then, I know Magic Johnson is in the majority or is one of the bigger owners. He's not the only owner, but and then Magic, like, just let Dave Roberts be your manager for years, please. If you can only get one World Series over the next ten years because of Dave Roberts being your manager, I can have that copium and I'd be okay with it. So they're gonna be under so much scrutiny this upcoming year. Like they're gonna be like, Yeah. If they don't win it. It's another disappointment because why shouldn't the top four in that lineup or no, no, sorry, top three of Betts, Otani, Freeman. How are you supposed to pitch around that? Just throw Brandon Fott and the well, D-backs both and walk, we'll go walk to, one for 21. <laughs> well, I think somebody posted the um, Otani's numbers against the D-backs current staff and he's like two for 25 or whatever. Like he hasn't done one all that. One well of them again. was off Tommy Henry, the four hundred. Yeah, that, that was blocks. basically it. That was a freaking bomb. But you know he struggles against Seawald, who and Seawald's seen him. So you know I have confidence in the pitching staff, but also pitch around him. And then who do you got? I've got a bunch of the Dodgers have a lot of holes in that lineup. Once you get to four, five, six, seven, like after Will Smith, there's nothing there. Yeah, like the top four is pretty good. Five through nine is not good. It's yeah, bad. but with our luck, they're gonna Jason like. Jason Hayward there's something about the Dodgers. Outman? They have that like. I'm convinced the Dodgers stole the Cardinals Devil Magic. The Cardinals playoff Devil Magic is now turned into the Dodgers just like cheating lab Devil Magic, to where they just take players past their prime, players that are broken, players that you know are like castaways, and then just go, you know, come to L.A. We'll fix you, like. The, the one person that it didn't work was Noah Syndergaard, but I feel like every other person that goes there, like Jason Hayward, I said the same exact thing last year. I was like, LMAO, the Dodgers are, high, are signing Jason Hayward, LOL, 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 and like he was still a really good hitter, and they still stumbled into 100 wins. Like, they'll, like I agree, like they're not the most intimidating once you get past like that top of the lineup, but they'll at least still have Gavin Lux coming back. Like They could still... like. Uh, like, you know, call up, like, I don't know, like, a lot of their minor leaguers, like, if they hold on to Miguel Vargas, like, Miguel Vargas, not the craziest, like, pop and, like, power hitter, but we saw it, the dude has an insane eye, like, he could be that kind of guy in the lineup that, like, you know, gets on, works the works those pitch counts for that one inning, uh, to, like, you know, 10 pitches in that bat, and then gets on for the top of the order for Otani or Mookie or Freddie, like, I don't know, like, they're definitely not, like, the... It's not like the Braves, I would say, where their lineup is like, Ugh, you know, kind of top to bottom. I don't know yeah. if there's anybody I'd be like, I'd want to pitch to. Like, I could pitch to guys, you know, in there, here and there. Like, I'd rather pitch to Sean Murphy than Acuna. But it's like, I'd rather pitch to Jason Hayward than Sean Murphy still. I'd rather pitch to, you know, a David, not bringing back Brault. I'd rather pitch to James Outman than uh, a, yeah, Albies. I'd rather pitch to. God, who's their third baseman? I'd rather pitch to Miguel Vargas over Austin Riley. Like, Miguel Vargas still has an eye, but, like, I'm sorry, no. Yeah. So, also, I mean, I know we're going to get into it right now, too, about the rotation. What What is there? How many? But like, you're going to get, what, 500 innings combined out of that rotation? Maybe. And you're really relying a lot of young arms, too. Like, Bueller coming back from his TJ. Yeah, Bueller. Glasnow is still, like, how many Glasnow. innings did Glasnow even pitch this year? Don't like three innings or something like that. He really didn't have much. It, then also, um, Gonsolin's out. May is coming back ish, maybe. Um, Urias uh, I, is in prison, I, don't I think. I think Dustin like, May is <laughs> for like August. 
Yeah. So it's like you have a lot of these guys. You're gonna have to. They're really gonna have to rely on guys coming back. Perfect, especially when they're, they come back towards the end of the season. Like there is no I, leeway for the Dodgers, which good for us, but still, it's like they still have a lot of moves to do. Which I know we're gonna talk about it now. Is the Glasnow? What what was the contract? Four years, one hundred and twenty five. Uh, so it's a the deal is five years, one hundred thirty six and a half million. But there yeah. is is it the five years? I thought it was something about like they're. It's counted like this year for the arbitration. Paying out like this year plus four more years, right? Yeah. So yeah. So this includes the twenty-five million he was scheduled to make uh, in twenty twenty-four. So I guess it's a what four it's year. About twenty-seven million. Yeah. Um. So yeah, one hundred thirty-six point five mil. Last year was twenty-one games, one hundred twenty in. Okay. Okay. That's that's much better. Is, I, thought, I thought he. Which is the most he's ever pitched. But that's also like, that's a little, con- maybe not concerning. Like it is a good sign. The fact that it, that's the most he's pitched, especially if it's coming off of a Tommy John surgery. But that's also like a little like, that, it's like a double-edged sword. It's like, yeah, that's a good sign. But it's also like, if that's the most he's pitched coming off of Tommy John, like you, you don't know, like, and then again, we don't know either. Like he could like fully like recover. Like we've seen guys get a Tommy John and bounce back and not need another one. But we've also seen plenty of guys need multiple and like turn yeah. into like Daniel Hudson. Like, yeah, he still has a good career, but the two Tommy Johns legitimately turned him into like a cool. He has 20 bullets in the tank every two days. He can throw 95 to 99 now, but like his elbow is not going to give you those innings. Like if you like, if you want Glasnow to be a borderline relief pitcher in three years, or you know he could still be really good, but you you just don't know with the the injury history that's been there. And it's not even just Tommy John; like he's had more things than just this T, this TJ. Is Kershaw free agent? He is. You mean the so. soon to be Texas Ranger Clayton Kershaw? <laughs> Sorry, we'll see. <laughs> like. And again, I was really pissed at first with this deal because they literally gave up nothing. But it is Tampa, and they they take these young guys and they make them suck. Yeah. And then they trade them about. I'd three, rather four have years them later. trade with Tampa, like a team that, like you know, like okay, at least Tampa, there's a good chance that the return they get is going to turn into something. Not like their goddamn trade for Mookie Betts, where it's like, oh, Jeter Downs, Alex Verdugo, and like two other, as Blake Snell would put it, slap dick no name prospects. Like, yeah, that that's just, um, that's just what, crazy. What do you think? You guys want to talk about the gallon contract, right? Yeah, I was gonna say, like, uh, Gabe, thank you for reminding or bringing that up. Like, with obviously, you know, two different guys, like, you know, I think Glasnow has been here for three years longer, two years, um, in the league. I think that just put Gallon's price even higher. If I'm yeah. not mistaken, that plus with the rumored contract for Yamamoto being in the three to three fifty, do you so think that priced that him was out for debunked today? Oh, was the bunt? Okay, he he's not asking. So no, I know he's my not favorite. asking. I'm just saying like the 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 potential like the projections. I should say the projections like how it's like well, it's, you know if Otani got the seven hundred, like I could see some team trying to fork over in a bidding war. For like Yamamoto, so like let's say Yamamoto does get a three hundred plus million dollar deal. Do you think like that along with Glasnow getting this one thirty two for four years? Like, like obviously we knew the market was going to be high. We knew Gallon would you know wouldn't be cheap. Knew he probably wouldn't even sign an extension. But let's say we go through. Let's say we pull. He pulls a Guriel, goes to free agency, comes back. Do you think that's still possible? Or do you think he might potentially be a little bit more, especially with obviously the the prices in the market still going to be up in two years when he's actually a free agent? I think the issue with Gallen is whether or not he wins a Cy Young in these next two years. I think once he went to Cy Youngs, it goes up even higher. I think you're talking about thirty million a year. I honestly think Steve X should go and sign him for two fifty for eight or nine years because the Garrett Cole contract is. 320 for nine years and he won the Cy Young. Gallon hasn't. He's been in contention, but he still hasn't. He doesn't have the hardware to prove it. So if you do that, it's about 27, 28 million a year, which I think it's fair for both sides. Obviously, you know, Gallon being a Boris client, he might think, you know, probably push up to, you know, three, 300. 
but still it's like he's gonna get a lot of money and i think depending on what happens I, i'm mostly curious not glass now but snell what does snell bring because they're about the same age snell has two cy youngs and he's a lefty if snell gets 300 million i think there's no way we resign gallon yeah, I think that's going to determine the uh, market for Gallon. is what does, first of all, who does Blake Snell? I think Blake Snell, Dodgers, Giants, or uh, Mariners. I would love to see him go to Seattle. I really would. Or like, he's Yamamoto. Yeah, no he, yeah. I, I mean, I would love to see him out of the NL West uh, personally, but like the three teams he's been linked to are Dodgers, Giants, and Mariners. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I think we just got to wait on Yamamoto and Snell, and then we can kind of start from there to see what Gallon can do. Um, just Gallon has to put it together for a full year. Like yeah. that's that's been his issue, is he'll have a stretch of two or three months where he looks like he's a top five pitcher, and then he has a stretch where he looks like he's not even top fifty. I'm hoping this deep playoff run kind of helped get him some like extra conditioning because like obviously is the most he's pitched in his career most of like the entire team like nobody's gone this far in the playoffs like yeah, I think he pitched him like 250 innings combined I mean that's a lot of wear and tear right there yeah so hopefully like obviously it could be he's you like, know, the other side. I don't want to pitch again for like two months cool. <laughs> yeah well I mean like he's uh I, I think like I saw something like him and his girlfriend just got a puppy and they're on like vacation now too. So good for him. He's probably, yeah. he's probably just got a 24 seven ice pack, like heater pack on that thing, like just rotating. Cause he's like, I need to let this thing chill, but I don't know, maybe the extra innings that he pitched in the playoffs kind of like help him like, you wow. know, sustain a little bit more of that. Cause I just feel like that's kind of what it was. Some of those starts at the end of the year, like you could have been gassed. And also I think it's great to point it, point out uh, a little bit when his slump started to happen was when Carson Kelly was his catcher. And as we all know, yeah. Carson Kelly's uh, pitch calling and, you know, <laughs> repertoire with like the, the pitchers versus how Gabby handled them. Like how many home runs were hit off of when Carson was the, not even just for gallon, but like all those guys, like whenever he pitched for catch for all those guys, how many home runs were hit when he was catching versus when Gabby was catching. Also Carson Kelly cop for Eduardo Rodriguez in Detroit as well for like what ten games or something like that. He had a higher ERA with them, so yeah, it is with Tigers. So you know, it is Didn't what it he is. Resign um, with the Tigers too. Yeah, yeah, like, he did. He's going okay. back to the him, Tigers. Man. I hope he bounces back. Yeah, I, I mean, so. I hope Gallon can you know put it all together for one season. Not going to be great for us, but it is what it is. So we can win a World Series in the next two years while we have them. At that point, you just hope we can get another starting pitcher because we're going to have a huge problem coming in a couple of years. Because Kelly is 34, right? Yeah, I think so. 34, 35. So you got to figure out, figure that out get, after Gallon's young. We got to develop some of these guys. Yeah. yeah. That's always Dre's, been their big issues. Like, I don't think Dre's pitching this. Like there's no, no he, had, he just uh, he just no, got TJ like at the end okay. of the season, so he'll be out at least until probably mm-hmm. August. Man, that would have been. I hope he comes back as a starter, uh, personally, because <laughs> he has some his stuff is good. So yeah, um, hopefully could you imagine, we have. So could you imagine World Series Game Four instead, even if it was a bullpen Great. game? Dre Jamison as your starter, like opener at least, like oh god, that would have been so much better than Miguel Castro in the second inning. More flashbacks, what? more flashbacks, more flashbacks. Yeah, what could have been? Um, let's just hope we have some news here soon. That is the one thing about the MLB off season, unlike the other few sports, you can go weeks with nothing, and then all of a sudden you get boom, 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 boom. I think the yeah. next shoe to drop, though, is Yamamoto because I think there's only like 20 days left. So, I think, yeah, I think now there's like like 19 or tw- like maybe 18. Yeah, but it's definitely closing. And like, it's not like one of those where when they get the deal signed, it's done right away. Like, they're still, you at least from what I remember, they usually give them a, a five, 10 day cushion before the windows even close before they announce the deal. So they can go through the physicals, they can go through like the, you know, the, 
finalizing the details. So then like the last day or two before the windows close, they can actually be like, cool, like this is a done deal. So, but you know, Guriel, Pina Power, still here in the Valley. Um, so I'm very excited about that. Um, any parting thoughts for the uh, pod today? Uh, Blake, why well, I said Blake, Brett. Um, no, just it's it's nice to have a playoff or playoff lol. Uh, it's nice to have an off season where the D backs are the not the the full talk of the town. Obviously, you're not gonna you know out talk or have people out mm-hmm. talk about you. The eh, speak more about you than the team that got Shohei Otani, but. It's been said before, the fact that other fan bases are like jealous of like the the moves that Ambacks are making and the aggressiveness that they're they're having okay. this postseason or this uh off season, like it's it's really it's really nice to see it. It's really refreshing. Yeah. Uh felt feeling pretty good here. I still think we got one or two not big splashes, but a few splashes we might still see here. Uh, cause it's still got what at least sixty days before uh pitchers and catchers uh report so yeah. very excited uh gabe any parting thoughts um not too many just i'm really excited for this season especially with the way the suns and the cardinals are playing right now I'm like i need baseball to start asap like i can't wait um i really want to see all these so guys many. play <laughs> also having an extra year of you know experience now like these guys are all what 23 24 years old like Oh, man, I'm just excited for the team, excited for these moves. I'm excited for the organization. And that's something I don't even know the last time we felt this way. Say so to quickly, before we get to your final thoughts, Brandon, to piggyback off of what Gabe said and the thought that uh, Josh had in the chat earlier, uh, great point is this season, D backs fans really need to really need to show out. Like, yeah, the, the the players have, you know, been vocal about like how much their support means. Like, the team is finally like trying, like, this will be a really big year to like if that three hundred dollar season pass is still available, go do it. Like like go get that. Do it now. Like that is that it's is you're not gonna beat that. Go go support the team. Go show Christmas. up. Like, it's a perfect Christmas gift. It's literally the perfect Christmas gift. You can literally just be like, Oh hey, instead of me getting you like ten things off Amazon, here's one three hundred dollar pass. But yeah, fans need to go out and support and actually show some love. Like Gabe said, like a lot of excitement from a lot of us. Like turn it and you know give bring that excitement especially on like opening day like that first series against the yankees i i do not want to see it like 50 percent or more yankees yeah. fans i will be sick it's gonna it's gonna happen because know, their but... fans are everywhere and they like that's the one thing i don't like about their fan base like they think oh we got one soda we are now a world series favorite i'll still take a, a game over the yankees a chase field than a, another Dodgers game here. So <laughs> well, we'll just have to uh, wait and see here. Um, we just got to, we still got to make some moves. Like this roster still has plenty of room for improvement that full time. Like we need a legit DH, not someone that can play DH, someone that is their responsibility. And that's okay. why the three guys that we talked about, Solaire, Martinez, and Turner. Like, it's got to be one of those three. Or Brandon Bell. Again, I don't hate the Brandon Bell idea. I just don't think right now that's the siding you make. I think that's something like the other three. That's a last year signing. Yeah, like that is a last year signing. And it, it, it also just feels, how do I put it? Um, Like something that, like, you only do if the other three you know you're out on. Like you've already, yeah. you've had the discussions and they'll, and both sides aren't even close. Then you, then you pivot to someone that you can get. So, but I would. My number one goal all all off season has been Jorge Soler. It has been because that man is a professional DH. Like I know a lot of people like JD, but JD after what he said about Chase Field, really put a bad taste in my mouth. So I, I'm not, and like a lot of Arizona sports fans likes to hold on to people that are no longer here. Suns fans are a prime example of that. 
And I think a lot of Dimebacks fans still want JD back. And again, I don't hate the idea. It just may take some time for me to adjust to it. So um, thanks for tuning in to our episode today. Uh, D-backs Dispatch, make sure to follow all of our socials in the de- description box below. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. See you all next time.